They will build it and they will come. Building for the future. The future looking better and better for the Iowa Western softball team. Teaming up against the Vikings. Who gets the X? We're the Reavers baseball team. The Bluff Sports, Sports Zone, Zone starts right now. Let's go! Hello, I'm J.J. Davis, and welcome to our latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. Well, Iowa Western's at it again. Not sitting pat and resting on its laurels. No, the powers that be have really gone and done it this time. Building for the future. And of course, the future is now and then for the Big Blue football program. The Reavers have already won a national title in their short but illustrious history. And grapple with this, the wrestling team in just five seasons had 10 All-Americans, two national finalists in the last two years alone. So what could possibly be next? The Iowa Western football program reached the pinnacle in 2012. The Reavers claimed their first national championship in just their fourth year of existence. The wrestling team hosted the Nationals just weeks ago, and the Reavers came away with five All-Americans and one finalist. Now, both programs have done more with less since day one, but not anymore. Feast your eyes on the latest Taj Mahal coming to the Iowa Western campus. It's been a long time coming, especially for wrestling. Uh, it's been five years, and we told Coach Watts when we hired him, you know, we're for sure going to have a, a wrestling room for you one day instead of scrambling for space constantly all the time. We had to renovate old space there again to uh, find football space when we started football. And, you know, it's, it's worked for them, uh, but, you know, they've grown and grown. Obviously, everything on this campus is really extremely nice and new. We get that all the time. There's not a family that comes through that isn't impressed with our campus, so this is just going to add to it. Having everybody housed in one building, you know, I mean, with all my staff and uh, it's the recruiting advantages that we're going to have with it, you know, um, it's kind of a, again, when, when we're here at the beginning to start the program and then now you got another facility that you're, you know, it's just, you're just more vested into the program, but again, with the design and kind of what you want and mm -hmm can kind of put in there what, you know, that's the exciting thing. I've never been a part of a, of a new construction. It's going to make things a lot, lot easier for us. Uh, you know, with the drill sessions in the morning and then uh, practice in the afternoon. Uh, we don't have to pick up mats and move them constantly. They've been very generous in, in giving me a lot of say on what's going into the room uh, and the wrestling side of the building. So um, I'm pretty happy with what it looks like. To me, it's really sad that a young man who walks on here with high hopes, they tell him, well, you don't have a locker because we don't have enough space. That, I, that's sad, and that's no way to treat kids. So having a locker room that's large enough that every student can have a locker, to me, is important. It's awesome to see the, the improvements and the advancements and staying competitive and, you know, sometimes it's an arms race and so you gotta, you gotta stay there and, and keep competing with the best of them. It means a lot to me that the school is committed to wrestling uh, on a long-term basis and, and, and they view it as uh, important enough and successful enough to uh, give us a facility like that. It's also a reward, you know. Thanks for the past players, you know, mm -hmm. and I want them at some point, I'd like to get, when right. we open that thing, we get them all back here right. because part of it was their success. If you look at our strategic plan, one of the things that we've said is, is that we're not going to do anything that we can't do in the best way possible. And so that's what we're going to do with this building. We're going to have locker rooms and practice facilities for those kids. That is the best thing that we can do. So the big dog on the block is about to get bigger. But in the end, of course, winning is better than losing. First place beats last place. But in the end, it's about the student athletes, the kids. They deserve the best, 
and Iowa Western's going to give it to them. And in the end, everybody wins. So I can just hear some of the ADs and coaches around JUCO Nation just got to be shaking their heads as one of the top athletic programs in the nation is about to get even bigger. And I mean bigger. When it's completed, sometime next spring or so, it will be two stories tall. Offices for both the football and wrestling coaches. Locker rooms for all the student athletes. Training rooms, of course, for treatment. Now the building will be fitted for the latest technology. The powers that be visited Nebraska and Creighton to get some ideas. The lobby is going to be cool and so on. Now, how big is the wrestling room? Three mats. Three mats. That's how big. So the biggest and baddest JUCO athletic program in the nation is about to get even bigger. Kudos to the administration at Iowa Western. Who wins? The kids. And that's what it's all about. Meanwhile, the baseball juggernaut rolls on. But up next, things are coming around for the softball team after the break. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. The Iowa Western softball team started out 1 and 10. 1 and 10. That's pretty much unheard of here in Reavers country. But since then, we'll try eight and four. It's not bad when you consider new coach, new system, and the fact that Big Blue hadn't even had a home game yet until now. Leading off and playing left field, number one, Tracy Edwards. After 23 games away from the Reavers sports complex, the Iowa Western softball team home sweet home for a double dip with the morning side JV. Top of the second inning. Starter Ellie Ponce strikes out the side, scoreless to the bottom of the third. After Ashley Caro walks, Tracy Edwards with a bunt base hit. One sack bunt later, Jade Lee bangs a bingle to center. Caro drives in, Edwards right behind, and it's two to zip Reavers. Good crowd on hand for the home opener. Now the visitors trail 4-0 in the fifth. After an error, hit batter, Ponce walks in a run. Mustangs are on the board. Lexi Miller goes the other way, make that 4-2. A three-run double makes it 5-4, and then Kayla Junk with a base hit, a six-run inning, 6-4 six morning side. But the home team gets it back in the bottom of the fifth. Alex Haygun knocks in a run, and then Caro drops one in. Iowa Western, 16 hits overall. You got a tie game, 6-6. Six six. And then in the bottom of the sixth, Jade Lee, her second hit of the game, a double to right, Raylene Uribe slides in seven to six, and then Lindy McIntyre rips a rocket to left. Another run comes around, eight to six, Reavers. Ashley Caro, her second hit of the game, a four run inning. Iowa Western outruns the Mustangs, 10 to six. I kind of fell asleep there for a minute, and uh, I mean, they scored six runs, and I think it was the fifth inning, fourth or fifth inning. Um, and I mean, that's just not putting your foot down and getting the job done. 
Alex Hagen came in and did a nice job. She's done a great job for us all year. Um, you know, Ellie's throwing uh, a three hitter, and you know we give up six runs on three hits, which is unfortunate because we're walking some people and making some errors. So, um, but Alex came in, stopped the lead, did a really nice job, and we got the bats going. We got a win. Alex Hagen goes two and a third to get the win. The freshman strikes out four and doesn't give up a hit. So, how you like them apples, huh? A little home cooking doesn't hurt anybody, and it certainly didn't hurt the Reavers. Now, winning tastes good no matter how you slice it, so how about another piece? After a little house cleaning, time for game two. Scoreless till the third inning. Raylene Uribe bangs a base hit, the sophomore five in two games. Uribe then steals second. Jade Lee knocks her in with a triple, and then Maddie Boyd strokes one to left. Lee comes in, two to zip Reavers. Top of the fifth. The Stangs' Kayla Jock rifles one down the line. The visitors have cut the lead in half, but bottom of the fifth inning. Lindy McIntyre to shallow left. <laughs> drops it. Boyd, who doubles, hustles in 3 1 Iowa Western, and everybody's all smiles. Now Morningside scores four runs in the sixth inning. A couple of walks, a swinging bunt here, bases loaded. And then Matty Markov. <laughs> a grand slam gives the Mustangs a 5-3 lead. <laughs> Bottom of the sixth inning, Jade Lee down the line. Two come home and it's tied right back up at five. And then Alex Haygun gets through. Two more come around and it's seven to five Reavers. Everybody hits. The home team 16 overall. Lindy McIntyre a rope to left, waving another run in eight to five. Ashley Caro off the glove. Iowa Western nine runs on nine hits in the inning. And the Reavers just mangle the morning side JV 12 to five. It's three to one and all of a sudden they come out and um, hang up four runs. Um, Obviously, we had to make an adjustment at the plate. We were not swinging the bats very well, which, um, you know, we had 15, 16 hits in the first game. So um, to come out and not swing the bat very well was a little upsetting, but um, hang up nine in that inning to uh, come back and get a win. What have you noticed in the girls? What's it been? Um, we just take things pitch by pitch right now. I mean, that's, we just take it slow. I mean, we used to get all jumbled up. We just play pitch by pitch, play by play. We slow it down, make our plays. How far has your team come since he's taken over? We've come a long way, especially um, making the change and adjusting to this new coaching. We have a new coach and he's had to learn new things, so it's just going to take some time to get used to it. And I mean, we are getting used to it. This is a tough group. Um, you know, I have a lot of fun with them. They're, they're really, they're really fun to be around. They work hard. I mean, they focus when they need to focus. So. Um, you know, they're just, they're just a fun group, so I mean, emotionally, they're, they're going to fight for you. They do on this day. 32 hits, 22 runs, two big wins at home. Your family! The Iowa Western softball team. It's coming. <laughs> and so, of course, are the boys of summer, setting sail against the Vikings. Hey, the softball team drops anchor to battle some knights when we come back. For more than a quarter century, thousands of Southwest Iowa athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sportsman. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury. They even partner with the surgeons at Ortho West, ensuring you get your own exclusive roadmap back to action. Methodist Jenny Ed Sportsman invites all Southwest Iowa athletes to its free walk-in clinic, open every Saturday morning, August through October. Jenny Ed Sportsman. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Your future is here at CBTV. You're in the game. You take the shots. It's your story. 
the Media Studies Program at Iowa Western, Real Reality TV, starring you. For more information, go to iwcc.edu. A sweep is a sweep, no matter how you look at it. Of course, it couldn't have come at a better time for the Iowa Western softball team. So the Reavers take their first two at home against Morningside. Next up, four afternoon games against North Platte. Now I feel like we're beginning to see things turn for the better. Head coach Ben Greer is beginning to see the fruits of his labor, and it bodes well for the future. Up next, a club from Nebraska. The Reavers outmuscled the Knights 5-zip and 13-4 on Saturday. Game one Sunday, Tracy Edwards leads off of the base hit. Raylene Uribe gets through, runners on the corners, and then Jade Lee chops one to second for the force, runs streaks across, Big Blue's on the board. Third inning, Lee again, bad hop. The freshman legs it all the way to third, and then Matty Boyd skies down the line. Can't get to it. Lee scores 3-0 Iowa Western. Four to zip after three. Everybody hits the home team, bangs out nine overall. Now the visitors help out. One of two North Platte errors later in the fourth inning. It gets by, make that five to one. Later in the inning, Lee right up the box. Not one, but two more score, seven to one Reavers. And when it rains, it pours. Look out, Iowa Western blows by North Platte, 11 to one. Trying to have uh team at bats, we're trying to have situational hitting where we're moving runners, we're not trying to be selfish and do too much, um, you know, and that's been our focus. When we get the ball rolling and we're having uh, quality at bats, um, you know, it's kind of contagious and so we've had a couple big innings this weekend which has been um, a bit exciting to see. It's nice to get some runs early. Eddie. Oh yeah, it's it kind of takes the pressure off as a pitcher to know that, you know, your team can pick you up with some runs and I mean, it takes off the pressure. Where's the comfort level of this team right now? Um, we're all pretty comfortable with each other. You know, we chemistry is good. Um, we have pretty, we're pretty close right now. I feel like it's all come together this weekend to a degree. Yeah, to an extent. Um, you know, we still got a long ways to go. Um, you know, we're. We're not focused on winning today, we're focused on winning a reach championship. I mean, that's the goal. We're trying to get better for that today. So, um, you know, I think we're doing a good job of getting better, but um, I don't think we're a polished product yet, but we're getting there. The Weavers complete the four game sweep by blanking North Platte in game two, 12 to zip. Iowa Western stays undefeated at home. Big Blue, 6 and 0. Oh. Probably the best off all we play. Now to the boys of summer. The third ranked team in the nation is home for a four game series against Ridgewater. Now the Vikings come in winless, and Iowa Western looks to keep it that way and take no prisoners. Now the Reavers have righted the ship and are on a roll at Doc Ross Field. After dropping their first two home games of the season, the Reavers gunning for their fourth win in a row. Up four to zip in the second, Jack Morak bangs a base hit. The home team seven hits in the first two innings, run comes around 5-0. Tyler Garrison then goes the other way and watch closely, just can't make the play. One of two Ridgewater errors in the inning, eight zip Iowa Western after two. Now one minute the sun is out, and the next it's snow and dipping dots. On the hill, Malik Moody goes six. Gives up just two hits, strikes out four, and the Reavers just throw out the Vikings nine to nothing. Hey, what was working? My changeup mainly, locating fastballs and then Mix in the change up every once in a while. It really uh, seemed like the hitters were just guessing. It's every pitcher's dream to get eight runs early. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. It just makes everything better. The dugout's cheering, everyone's just upbeat. Everyone, I mean, it's just a better attitude towards the game. Yeah, anytime that uh, you can go out and you're at home and you can put up eight, um, it can relax you. Uh, I, I think it, it relaxed us the wrong way where we started giving up are at bats, but Malik kept going out there and throwing strikes, and that was the big bonus for us. Always nice to get the first game of four under these conditions. 
yeah, you know, honestly, it's really not as cold as, as what it looks. Um, but, you know, it's not ideal as I've got snow on me right now. The Reavers win their fourth straight at Doc Ross Field. Now, during that span, Iowa Western has scored a total of 34 runs. Three. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Game two, same as the first. After Jared Gates leads off with a double, Tyler Cropley. That's a bunt base hit. Dalton Robeson then off his glove. Gates hustles around, and the Reavers once again on the board. Eric Mingus bangs a base hit. Cropley comes in, and it's two to zip. Caleb Reed walks in a run, and then Chase Hager, a base on balls. Matt Hoyt trots in 4 0 Iowa Western after one. Now the home team, 10 hits in game one, 14 in game two. Second inning, Mingus, another base hit. Hoyt, who triple scores, and the route is on. Mitchell Thompson sends one to the alley and left. Mingus comes around six to zip after two. Fourth inning, Nick Menken joins the fun, punches one to right. One run is in, here comes another. As the Reavers score seven runs with two outs. And Iowa Western drops the Vikings in five, 14 to zip. We did put some balls in play with two strikes, which is what you need to do. Uh, and we got some hits with two outs, which is what you need to do also. Yeah, uh, we were, had an approach that game uh, out in the outfield. Our coaches talked to us what we're looking for. And uh, everyone went out swinging fastballs and took the bad pitches. And we came out on top with some good swings and good runs. I feel like it was contagious with you guys today, all seeing the ball well. Yeah, when uh, when everybody's sitting, or when one person's hitting, it's easier for everybody to hit. So, starting off the game with two runners on base, so made it easy. Where's the ball club's confidence right now? Uh, we just won two games, so I feel like we're pretty confident. Um, we've been trying to do that to a team all year, so uh, it's finally it's finally good to do that to a team and hope we keep rolling. I do know they got three arms. That are good arms, and we're going to see them tomorrow. And uh, uh, but with what we threw today, and how well we threw, and didn't use any of our bullpen, you know, we'll be okay tomorrow too. Three good ones. Um, that will be 85, 88, no higher. Supposedly. The Reavers writ Ridgewater twice in one day. All for one, and one for all. Yeah. Hey, go. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, our play of the week. But first, does the slaughter continue? Get out the brooms even on the other side. Looking for these? You drive buzzed, it could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Now that's more like it. The third ranked team in the nation pounds hapless Ridgewater by a combined score of 23 to nothing. Two down, two more to go. Now don't even think about the Reavers getting complacent. Not with the Hall of Famer in the dugout. On your mark, Reardon, we'll have the Reavers rip roaring and raring to go for game three. And it's not a question of who's gonna win. It's just a question of by how many. 
Sunday, a carbon copy of Saturday, except for the bikes draw first blood. After a leadoff triple, Ridgewater grounds out but grabs the lead. Bottom of the first, Matt Lloyd blisters one up the box. Jared Gates, who doubled scores, tie game. Now the sack fly makes it two to one, and then Jake Kistitis drops one and left. Zach Hanna comes across three to one, Iowa Western. Declan Doyle then bloops one over the back at third. And it drops in. The Reavers four hits, five runs in the inning, and it's like taking candy from a baby. Running and gunning, home team steals second in the second. And then Jared Gates skies to right, and it's over his head. Caleb Reed hustles in Iowa Western, seven hits, eight runs in the first two innings. Top of the third, the hit parade continues. Declan Doyle goes the other way, drops in, nine nothing Reavers, and it's time to text. The third ranked team in the country just busts loose again with 13 hits. Iowa Western vexes the Vikes again, 11 to one. That's all you can really ask for is putting it on them early and then uh, just doing what you're asked for and doing your job as a hitter and not being selfish up there. Where's the confidence level of this team right now? I feel like our confidence is pretty much through the roof right now because everyone's having fun, everyone's playing, doing what they're supposed to do. I thought we jumped on them yesterday and, and got bored and, and couldn't handle success and started getting a little selfish at the plate. And I thought in this first game today, um, we, were, we were refreshed and regathered and uh, we'll see what we can do going into this last game. Two pounds score, Doc Ross Field for game one. He was taken 11 2 1. Gets even better in game two. Big Blue bangs out 15 hits, destroys Ridgewater 17 to nothing. Iowa Western completes the four game sweep, scoring 41 runs and giving up just one. The Reavers hit the road for a couple of weeks and will not be back home till Tuesday, April 12th. And now it's time for our play of the week. Bought to you by the Univista University. The Iowa Western softball team opens its home schedule with a doubleheader sweep of the Morningside JV. Jade Lee has a field day at the plate. The freshman from Canada collects five hits, knocks in six runs. Weaver shortstop Jade Lee with our play or plays of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by the Univista University. Call 712-749-1990 to register today. And so it appears the Iowa Western baseball and softball teams are beginning to hit their stride. So you know what that means for the rest of Juco Nation. Ah, but spring break is upon us. Yours truly and the gang here at the BSC have a week off. We'll be back in two. Now remember, as always, to keep it here for more news and information in your community by tuning in to the Council Bluffs News with Zach Harper Blunt. And so, for this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm J.J. Davison. As always, I'll see you in two weeks.